Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. KDE Plasma has a new release out, Plasma 5.20. It's still KDE 5, it's still improvements instead of revolution, but there is a ton of good stuff in there, so let's take a look right after this. This video is sponsored by Linode. Founded in 2003, Linode is the largest independent cloud service provider built on open source. If it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. Multiple distros are available, including Ubuntu, CentOS, Alpine and of course Arch. The multiple server configurations make any app or service flexible and scalable to host a website, set up your own personal VPN, create a Nextcloud instance, host a game server and more. Linode offers 24-7 support any day of the year by phone or support ticket regardless of your plan size. The simple pricing with monthly caps ensures that there is no hidden fees and a generous monthly transfer is built in which means there is no large bill surprises like you get from AWS or Azure. Sign up today at linode.com slash linux experiment to get your $100 in Linux server credits. The link is in the description. Let's start with the desktop. Plasma 5.20 has a lot of visible usability changes to it. The first one that you'll probably not notice if you're already using KDE is that the task manager is now in icons only mode by default. This means it will look a bit more like Windows 10 without labels next to the various icons there. Pinned applications and running applications will look the same and apps with multiple windows will show an indicator on their icon to let you know you have more than one window open at the same time. You can still hover over the icons and see the various open windows for each app. I must say I find this change welcome and I think it looks a lot more modern, but some people might not like it especially if they have to deal with a lot of windows for each app. Fortunately you can still use the previous task manager if you prefer. You can also minimize an app's window by clicking its icon in the dark which saves a bit of time and is easier than to hunt for the minimize button in the title bar. On the shell itself, the notifications area has also received some changes. First, the clock now shows the date by default which is a small change but a welcome one. The indicator icons are now also displayed as a grid. Click the little arrow to see all of your extra indicators and you'll see them displayed as a grid. This should also be more touch-friendly than what it used to be, which might help the KDE Plasma mobile project. You can also enable Do Not Disturb mode by just middle-clicking on the notification indicator, just like you can in Elementor iOS. Now speaking of notifications, Plasma will now also warn you when your disk is about to run out of space. More polish has also been applied to the on-screen display elements, like when you change the volume or the brightness. These little pop-ups now use less screen space and look cleaner. KRunner has also received a few changes. The search tool can now be repositioned anywhere on the screen and not only glued to the top of the screen. To move it, press the super key and drag the window around. Yes, the super key. Plasma has traditionally used the alt key to move and resize windows, but in 5.20 it's moved to the super key to avoid conflicting with other shortcuts in various apps. This brings it in line with every other desktop environment, so it's good for muscle memory. In traditional KDE fashion, they couldn't resist adding a few more features to that though, so if you hold the meta key while dragging a window and press an arrow key, you will auto-tile that window to a part of the screen. You can also combine arrows to only use a corner of your screen. That's a fantastic improvement to window management and should probably make people very happy. To complete this tour of new desktop features, GDK apps now use the same appearance for their title bar buttons as regular cute apps, so everything should look more coherent here. Now, as always, Plasma has given their settings even more attention. First, the Bluetooth settings have been completely redesigned, as well as the user management page and the auto start panel. These look a lot better, more simple, and probably a lot easier to port to Plasma Mobile as well, with a simple list of elements. The biggest change, though, is the ability to highlight the settings you've changed. A new button called Highlight Change Settings allows you, on any settings panel, to see what you've tweaked and changed from the default. I must say it's a good feature, especially since KDE is so full of options everywhere. Now in terms of new available settings, you've got the shortcuts panels being merged into one single panel. You can now change the speed of the cursor for touchpads, which I'm surprised to learn wasn't already possible. And you can set a charge limit on supported devices to avoid the battery charging up to 100% and save battery cycles. Window management has also received a lot of love. You can now uninstall user installed scripts from KWIN, directly from the KWIN scripts panel. And you can tell Windows to not remember their last open position and stay positioned where you told them to be. This is a very good change because any new window that opens anywhere else in the center of the screen is a heresy that must be purged. 
But if you're a heretic and prefer your windows to appear to a certain position or to a remembered one, KD can now remember these positions on a per screen arrangement basis. This means that your windows will remember where they are placed when your laptop is connected to an external display, but once you unplug that monitor, they will also remember where they should be placed on a laptop screen. This, I must admit, is an awesome heresy. Finally, we have the obligatory Wayland improvements. Basically, with 5.20, Wayland is now usable. You can middle click to paste clipboard contents, you can adjust the mouse and touchpad scroll speed, and you can use screen casting. The Windows thumbnails are now also correctly displayed when you hover over an icon in the task manager, and when Wayland crashes, it no longer takes down the whole desktop with it. Okay, so we've had a few releases of Plasma where everything was about streamlining the settings. KDE 5.20 is different. You can see they are starting to pay some more attention to the desktop itself and not just how to configure it. They call this a massive release and I can only agree. The number of changes is enormous, even though their scope is pretty small individually. But what's more important, in my opinion, is how KDE Plasma feels nowadays. It feels like a polished experience. It feels designed with principles in mind, with a coherent team, instead of being a disjointed suite of applets and panels cobbled together. It feels like a group of individuals have taken the time to think about how to make this feature work right, feel right. And that's not something I've felt with KDE since KDE 4 released. But with 5.20, I can finally sense a direction and see how coherent everything is. The work the team has done on the settings has paid off, because these are extremely numerous, but they are now easy to navigate and they all look and work pretty much the same. It's easy to find your way through them. I've always felt that if KDE could get its desktop to start looking and feeling coherent, then it would quickly become the best option out there. And I think this point is approaching fast or might already be here. The only problem I have with KDE is that it's being let down by these applications. The default ones are pretty good, but the third party not provided with the desktop applications are in my opinion pretty lacking. They don't feel right, they don't look right, they don't look coherent. I just have a problem with them and I think if the KDE Plasma team worked with the KDE Applications team or maybe helped them out to try and make them look more coherent and more professional, then I think KDE would easily take the crown of the best Linux desktop there is. Now that's it for this video, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't hesitate to like or dislike if you didn't. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications if you want to see more videos like this one. And if you want to help support the channel, you can join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members and get access to an exclusive monthly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!